Fabian Chapik was born on June 3, 1870 in Bohemia. He was baptized Catholic on the Feast of St. Norbert, hence his name. As a teenager, he left his childhood home to go to school. He lived with his uncle, and in return for tuition and housing, Norbert worked in his uncle's large tailoring shop. As he grew older, he found himself becoming more and more religiously liberal and decided to leave the Catholic Church to become Baptist. Words not often said together, liberal and Baptist. This did not go over well with his uncle, however, and he was kicked out of his home. What does he do? He starts selling Bibles door to door to door and organizing evangelical meetings. Encouraged by those around him, Norbert began attending a Baptist seminary and became a minister. During this time, he also met his first wife, Lydia. They had six children together. Larger than life, he loved his family dearly, but with his ministry and writing, he was not often not able to be as present as he wanted to be. Unfortunately, Lydia was also not healthy and died, leaving Norbert and the children behind. Soon after, Norbert married his second wife, Marie, the children's governess. They had another three children. So for those of you keeping count, we're up to nine kids. This was also the beginning of World War I, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire was not a place to be for a liberally progressive minister with a penchant for speaking out against the Catholic Church. Chopik learned that he was blacklisted with the intention of the state to arrest him. Marie and Norbert left Europe with their children, moving to a Baptist community in New York and later New Jersey. Unfortunately, Norbert was widowed once again when Marie died shortly after the move. An avid reader and scholar, an author, Chopik spent hours each day in the New York Public Library. There he met his final wife, Maya, the library director. According to his grandson, Ron Frederick, his children were thrilled for Chopik finally found an intellectual match. Even with a booming congregation, Chopik was not happy. His increasingly liberal faith was not meshing with the American Baptist culture. After two hearsay trials, Chopik left the Baptist ministry in 1919. Like most parents, Maya and Norbert still wanted a robust religious education program for their children that were living at home. So they did what any good religious liberal does and went church shopping. The religious education program they loved the most that also aligned with their values was the First Unitarian Church of Essex County in Orange, New Jersey. In 1921, they became members. It was also at this time that World War I ended and a new country of Czechoslovakia was formed. Norbert and Maya were excited to move home and begin again. They sold their house, but ran into some problems and ended up staying longer in the United States than anticipated. Chopik and the minister at the First Unitarian became very close, and the minister encouraged Chopik to start his own congregation in Czechoslovakia. At this time, we can play a little bit of six degrees of separation from Salt Lake City. Norbert, with the backing of his minister, met with Samuel Atkins Elliott of our very own Elliott Hall, then president of the American Unitarian Association. Elliot pledged his support for Chopik in bringing Unitarianism to Prague. In 1922, Chopik organized the Prague Congregation of Re Liberal Religious Fellowship. Soon, they had only standing room crowds. Sunday sermons were repeated and debated at another meeting during the week. In 1923, Chopik held the very first flower communion. Not one to sit on the sidelines. Maya joined the ministry herself and was ordained in 1926. Through hard work, the support of the American and British Unitarian Associations, and 
the love of their communities. In 1930, they renovated a medieval palace and became officially recognized by the Czech government. At this time, their congregation, wait for it, had over 3,200 members with a robust ministry that included a lifespan religious education program. It was the largest Unitarian congregation in the world. Ever the evangelist, Chopik continued to foster six different fellowships throughout the country that he visited regularly. Now, as we know with history at this time, World War II was just around the corner. And once again, Chopik's radically liberal ministry was under attack. Chopik and his daughter Zora were arrested by the Gestapo on March 28th of 1941 under the charge of listening to foreign broadcasts and high treason. His daughter was also charged with distributing materials. Trials were held, and on appeal, Chopik was actually found innocent of the treason charge. The Gestapo did not care, however, and Chopik and his daughter were sent to a Nazi concentration camp and murdered shortly after. For Unitarian Universalists celebrating Flower Communion, we remember the life of this incredible minister. As we give and take from bouquets, honor the words of Reverend Norbert Chopik. Whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. To find more histories of Unitarian Universalists, please visit our website, uuoftheweek.org. Thank you.